Hello and welcome. I would like to introduce you to a new dental treatment method which opens new possibilities for your patients and for your practice. It is very simple to implement in your daily practice. I would quickly like to introduce myself. My name is Anja Wenger. I work in my own dental practice in Switzerland as a general dentist, together with two hygienists and orthodontists. I've also been working in the dental industry and now support a startup company by introducing their products to, to us dentists. Um, if you wish, I will later share my contact details with you if you have any questions. Before we start, a quick disclaimer. So um, what do I mean when I talk about caries? When I talk about caries, I mean a progressive disease, also known as a decay. And nomenclature varies from country to country, so it's important that we mean the same thing when talking about caries. If I talk about initial caries, I refer to a non-cavitated caries lesion, which is also sometimes called white spot lesion. In some studies you will see, we will also call it white spot lesion. A cavity is a cavitated caries lesion, so a hole to speak with the patient's language. Let's get started. What do you think if you see that kind of lesion? Despite the fact that we have, in most countries, a decreasing DMF index, still a significant number of patients show those early carious lesions. Typically, initial carious lesions are characterized by an opaque, chalky white spot, which can be located occlusally, as on the left picture, or a little bit supra-gingival, one millimeter above the sulcus and the buccal surface. Or it can also be located interproximal which we usually only see on the x-ray. And typically this initial caries lesion is below the contact point. So what do we do in those cases? How do we treat those patients which present themselves with such a picture we have seen before? Things like biofilm control, nutrition recommendation, oral hygiene instructions, fluoride varnish, sealings, or even fillings might come to your mind. And how do we measure success of all those interventions? And what is success? Is it to keep natural tooth structure or is it to do a nice filling? I will structure the presentation in four blocks and we will start with the indications and use in daily practice. That's the product I'm going to talk about. And, um, the product has different names in different markets, but basically it is the same. For the European market, we use the colon repair, and for the US market, the product has been enhanced with some fluoride and therefore is called Cordon Repair Fluoride Plus. But it works the same, and also the studies can be applied to both products. Let's quickly have a look at caries. Caries is a progressive disease, it origins from forming a biofilm on the tooth surface, a plaque, what we can call also, and bacteria start to colonize and the biofilm grows. Due to that, the demineralization starts. Calcium and phosphate are dissolved from the enamel into the saliva. By removing the biofilm, meaning by brushing the teeth, the remineralization process starts. The process of demineralization and remineralization is usually in equilibrium as long as the biofilm is under control. As we all know, as soon as the demineralization outperforms the remineralization, a white spot lesion becomes visible and the process of tooth substance destruction continues in the fashion you know, up to a pulp lesion if no treatment intervention happens. So today we have the option to work in the field of prevention by taking care of the biofilm, stopping the colonization and fostering the remineralization. Or we have the option, if it's progressed into a cavity, to do a filling or maybe also a fissure sealing or an interproximal sealing, while we don't have anything for in between. So the reversible phase is the phase which we should try to extend and make things happen in that phase, as long as everything is still reversible and is not progressing into a cavity. And this is what we are going to look at, a new treatment options for our patients and also for you. 
we can now catch the reversible phase of the lesion and stop the caries progression. Now we have the possibility to do that with a regenerative therapy without drilling. We can regenerate the defect and avoid turning the defect into a cavitated lesion. With that, we can provide or we can offer to our patients a carious treatment without drilling, as some people claim in their marketing slogans. And we can save the tooth from getting a filling or at least postpone the filling to happen later on. That's a very important argument I have noticed in my practice, especially for children and their parents. So let's have a look at the treatment. The treatment aims to stop initial caries, to progress any further, and become a cavity. It remineralizes the lesion in depth, up to the, even up to the dentine. And here lies the significant difference to fluoride varnish. Fluoride varnish only remineralizes superficially the outer part of the enamel. We will see later how deep the remineralization of fluoride varnish is in the enamel compared to the new product I'm going to show you. Self-explaining is that additional measures need to be taken to facilitate remineralization because remineralization cannot happen if the biofilm is there. So a good plug control is required. This is how the product looks like. Uh, the box is shaped like, like a hydroxyapatite crystal and contains 10 packs with one applicator each. The tip of the applicator is the interesting part. Details on the mode of action uh, will be presented by my colleague um, Dominic in the second block uh, you can click on later on. Let's have a look how this product is applied in daily practice. This is a video you can also find on YouTube. In case you start using the treatment therapy or your hygienist will use it, they can always go to YouTube and see step by step how it's done. In this case, it will be used for an interproximal caries on a permanent tooth, but you could also use it on deciduous teeth. That works also very well. What we need as a preparation for the treatment is the etching gel, the same we use for doing um, a teeth with restorative fillings, maybe um, Optrogate or any cheek retractor, and sodium hypochlorite, 1%. The tooth surface is cleaned with sodium hypochlorite to remove the organic pellicle and rinsed. After that, we apply the etching gel for 20 seconds and rinse off the etching gel. The area the tooth should be semi-dry, so we don't need a rubber dam, but it's really good to use some cotton rolls to keep the area dry and avoid saliva floating over the tooth. Then you press the applicator in the container and remove that little applicator with the sponge sitting on the tip of the applicator. And then the product is applied on the tooth surface, either buccal, occlusal or interproximal. And because the product is liquid, it penetrates into the defect. Defect has a higher acidity and therefore attracts the liquid to go inside the porous defect. And then it forms a free D-net and start the remineralization process starts. More details on how that works is in the second block, in the science block. Okay, so what are the indications? I've mentioned it already before. It's interproximal, occlusal, buccal, and it also works on deciduous teeth. Very important is it needs to be an initial caries which is active. How do we see if the caries is active? An active caries is characterized by a white, opaque, and rough spot. The surface is not shiny. And for those lesions, the codon repair is the treatment method of choice. Inactive carriers can also be treated, but here it would, not, it would not work because the top part of the tooth has already remineralized and those porosities are not existing anymore. So the product cannot go in, into the depth of the tooth. So inactive carriers like brown or black spots or teeth with a white spot with a shiny surface um, should not be treated. There it will not work. Let's briefly have a look at the limitations of guided enamel regeneration. Cement carriers is not a subsurface carriers. It is a surface carriers, so we miss the hypomineralized plate 
and the compartment for the undisturbed remineralization. So on root or cement carries, the core don't repair will not work. Secondary carries is, for example, a, a carries at a margin of a crown. And this is usually a very unpredictable area for a non-invasive treatment method. And very often those carries is also a surface carries. And then we have the same arguments as we just had with the cement carries. If we have a white spot in the aesthetic zone after debonding of a bracket, for example, the arresting of the caries will work very nicely with the code on repair, but the white spot, the appearance, this white appearance will remain, and therefore another treatment might be considered like a bleaching or an infiltration therapy or even a veneer uh, for those very aesthetic areas where the white spot is limiting the aesthetics. And arrested caries, like a brown spot, is an already inactive carries and therefore they already remineral it's already remineralized at the surface and then the codon repair will not work also not subsurface because the top part the surface part is already remineralized if we look at the mih the molar incisor hypomineralization it is a qualitative mineralization defect it's not a carries so here, there's another product which will desensitize the very sensible tooth. That's the cord on desense, but the repair will not be able to remineralize those quantitative mineralization defect. Occlusal carriers, we saw that picture early, is seen on freshly erupted molars. Applying a rubber dam is not needed for the regeneration with cord on repair. Dry the area with some cotton rolls or use an optra gate or cheek retractor if available. Buckle caries can be a problem in patients with dry mouth, but most likely I see those cases with insufficient biofilm control. If you think, for example, about patients who have undergone autolontic treatment and have some fixed appliances in their mouth, for them it's very difficult to clean those areas. And once the appliance is um, debonded. We see also those white spots, which are rough and not shiny. This is also an active carries, which can be treated with the codon repair. The main indication for my practice, I would say 95% of patients uh, present themselves with an interproximal carries. This is characterized usually on the x-ray with a higher radio translucency, or sorry, with an increased radio translucency with a higher um, black area. And this is usually localized just below the contact point. Also cases with a DE free lesion can be gen regenerated as long as the enamel surface is not cavitated. This is very important. Once we have a cavitation, we should consider another treatment. An intact surface is needed for the protein, which is on the sponge in the applicator, to form a matrix. As soon as this pseudo intact surface, let's call it like this, is not existing, this 3D net, this matrix cannot be built. Now we can continue with the second block, technology and science, which is covered by my colleague Dominic.